Welcome to our Five on Five. Please welcome back Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, good to see you. Good to be back. Thanks for coming. So uh, you're, you're in town today talking about this bipartisan legislation to lower prescription drug prices in Oregon and across the country. Where does it stand today? We were able, and Senator Grassley, he is a Republican. He is a farmer. Uh, he's from Iowa. He got together with this gray panther from Oregon who's a Democrat, and we defied the odds, and we got a strong bipartisan bill to stop the pharmaceutical price gouging out of the Senate Finance Committee right before the break. So it is ready to go to the floor, and we'll see what the Republican leadership does. Are they going to be on the side of Big Pharma, which is lobbying like crazy against this, or are they going to be with the patients and support this bipartisan bill? The heart of the bipartisan bill stipulates that if a drug company is price gouging and they charge, for example, way more than the inflation rate, they would have to make a payment into Medicare in order to cover the cost. So the pharma lobby can't say we're setting prices. Companies make those decisions. But we are saying we're going to limit subsidies if these big pharma companies are price gouging. You've long been a leader on mental health issues and will soon be receiving the Gordon and Sharon Smith Award from the Oregon chapter of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Tell us about your passion for these issues. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased to be, you know, once again uh, working with Gordon and Sharon Smith on this. We all know of the horrible tragedy with their son. Uh, my brother was a schizophrenic. For years on end, he would be on the streets and we felt he was going to either hurt himself or someone else. And so, you know, mental uh, illness has affected so many in our state. And I particularly want to commend uh, the media, this station and others throughout Oregon, who are trying to make sure that we lift the taboo on talking on uh, this whole issue. President Trump is, is talking about um, talking about maybe we should be focusing on mental illness and not banning assault rifles. Where do you stand with that? I, I think it's very important that we recognize we're going to have to take a host of measures if we're going to make a real difference in having more safety for our communities. I think, for example, 90% of the American people think there ought to be strong background checks. We ought to keep guns out of the hands of people who have ties to terrorism or domestic violence. So right up at the top of the list should be uh, a strong, loophole-free, airtight background uh, checks uh, law. I also think, and Oregon has uh, worked uh, to be leaders in this, red flag laws uh, make sense. I do think that mental health uh, uh, services need to be expanded, but I think we need a host of measures to make our communities safer. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back. We'll talk about Walmart and what they announced today regarding guns. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Senator Ron Wyden. Senator Walmart announced this afternoon it's broadening its ban on handgun sales to include all 50 states, as well as banning sales of certain kinds of ammunition and asking customers to no longer openly carry their guns in stores. Do you think this is a sign that we might be finding some common ground on gun control in, in D.C. this fall? I just heard about this uh, development, but I do believe that when you have decisions made in the free market, in other words, you have them made by major businesses, that can really affect you know, behavior. That sends a very strong message that we're not doing enough to promote sensible and I think bipartisan uh, ideas for keeping communities safer. So yes, I, I do believe that when major companies send a message in the marketplace to their customers, to the country, it makes a real difference. You recently told the Willamette Week, quote, Mark Zuckerberg has repe repeatedly lied to the American people about privacy. I think he ought to be held personally accountable, which is everything from financial fines, and let me underline this, the possibility of a prison term, end quote. Do you think Zuckerberg should be charged over the Cambridge Analytica scandal? The law, of course, today doesn't allow it. What I was referring to is a proposal I have made that would stipulate 
that if a CEO of one of the major tech companies, you know, someone with millions of customers, billions of dollars in revenue, lies to the federal government, such as the Federal Trade Commission, about their privacy policy, I do believe that that CEO should be held personally liable in terms of financial penalties and the possibility of a prison term. That is, in fact, what the financial services law, known really as Sarbanes-Oxley, stipulates as it relates to the major executives at financial services companies. I have uh, proposed legislation that would make that applicable to the tech executives as well. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. It. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.